people of the parish. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to be the Lord of the world. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, and we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God, Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind, and love everyone in truth of heart. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Oreb on the day of the assembly, when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I had not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord. If today you hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Come, let us sing joyfully to the Lord. Let us acclaim the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us joyfully sing psalms to him. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord who made us. For he is our God, and we are the people he shepherds, the flock he guides. Oh, that today you would hear his voice. Harden not your hearts at Meribah, as in the day of Massa in the desert, where your fathers tempted me. They tested me, though they had seen my works. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The people who sit in darkness have seen a great light. On those dwelling in land overshadowed by death, light has arisen. Hallelujah.
the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue, there was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, what have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority. He commanded even unclean spirits, and they obeyed him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the coming church year, the Gospels are going to be primarily from St. Mark. We know that four of our Lord's disciples wrote Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. St. Mark's Gospel is the shortest. It's almost half of what St. John's Gospel is. So one thing you're going to notice in the coming year the Gospels are going to be shorter. That's not always better. St. Mark doesn't go into details. He gives you the bottom line. This is what happens without much coloration to it. The other thing you're going to notice about St. Mark's Gospel, he focuses on the miracles that our Lord performed. So in the coming year, a lot of the Gospels are going to show miracles. Our Lord healing. Three kinds of miracles, if we had to categorize the miracles in St. Mark. There were miracles over nature. When our Lord took the loaves and the fish and he took them and multiplied them, that's a miracle over nature. When he walked on the water or when he calmed the storm, that's a miracle over nature. Then there were miracles of healing illness. Lepers are cleansed. Blind people are given sight. People who cannot hear are able to hear. Those are miracles of healing. But there's another category, and you see it throughout the Gospel of St. Mark especially, and it's the expulsion of demons. And that's kind of fascinating. I mean, all of us like horror movies. Remember Chilla Theater? Maybe you won't. I gotta be an old guy to remember. It used to be on late at night and the movies would go to like 12, 30, all horror movies. We kind of are fascinated by that. So when we hear, you know, expulsion of demons, Right away, the antenna go up. Oh, tell me, what's that about, Father? I'll try to, but before we go there, let me just say this. I get the feeling that when our Lord performed his miracles, he knew that they were going to come back to bite him. He knew that the people were not going to understand. God did not send his son into the world to make this world perfect. That's our job. We're supposed to make the world good. God sent his son into the world to show us how to get to heaven, to clearly point out the road between where I stand right now and the gates of heaven. 
to tell me the things to do so I can stay on that road and get safely to heaven, to tell me the sins that take me off that road and to warn me, don't, don't go there, you're off the road, you won't go to heaven if you continue like that. That's why God sent his son into the world. It's not about this world. It's about leaving and getting to heaven. Each time our Lord performs a miracle, he knew they're thinking I came to make this world perfect. God, anything that's wrong, take it away. Make it better. God, I've got a hangnail. Take it away. Whatever imperfection I'm experiencing, well, I'm attached to you, Lord. You make it better for me. Why did he perform the miracles if he knew that people weren't going to listen to what he was saying? They were just going to watch the miracles. When he spoke about sin, they turned them off. When he was multiplying bread and fish, they came. So why did he do the miracles, knowing that this is why, how people would react? The answer is beautiful. He had compassion on the unhappiness and misery of the people who were sick or possessed. He felt sorry for them. What a beautiful thing to keep in mind. God knowing that in doing this good thing, in curing, knowing that they were going to come back and want more and totally misunderstand, he couldn't not do it because he felt so sorry for the person in front of him. They bring him someone who never walked on a pallet. He knows, if I cure this person, they're all going to want to be cured. You know, a million people are going to be at my doorstep asking me to make this world perfect. But I feel sorry for this guy. I'm looking at in his face and I feel pity for him. How good to know that that's how God feels. And even though this is going to come back and bite me, I do will it. Pick up your pallet and walk. And he cured. Now, this type of miracle, what was a person possessed by a demon? Our first thought is going to be, you know, like Beastmaster, the horrible, scaly thing that's going to chase you around your house and try to eat you. That's not possessed by demon. Would that Satan worked like that? Because then I would just tell you, stay out of the basement, stay out of the attic. You'll be all right. <laughs> Would that he did chase us around the house? That's not how the devil works. The devil doesn't want to eat me. The devil wants my soul. The devil wants to separate me from God. He wants to separate, separate me from God in this world, and he wants to separate me from God for, for all eternity. That's what he wants. In order for him to do that, I have to welcome him into my soul. I have to open the door and say, come in. And his trick is how to get me to open the door. He does it by playing on unhappiness. He looks inside of us and sees there are things that make us unhappy. Maybe it's something that was done to us when we were children. Maybe it's a betrayal we experience as adults. Maybe it's a dissatisfaction. We look at other people and we see what they have and we don't have it and we become dissatisfied with ourselves. I wish I were taller, I wish I were shorter. I wish I were fatter, I wish I were thinner. I wish I was smarter, I wish I wasn't so smart. I'm not satisfied with who I am and what I have. 
I wish I had other people. I'm not satisfied with these people. My life would be perfect. We dwell on the things that we think are important, we don't have, and we allow ourselves to become unhappy. <clears throat> the door is wide open because what he will do is come in and he will get us to dwell on that unhappiness. Thinking about it, reliving it, we're feeding the demon and he grows. And pretty soon, he's taken over the house, my soul, and I can't get rid of him. I fed him for so long, I can't get rid of him. What does it look like? It looks like the person who's angry. Do you know angry people? They, they're just angry. They're angry at the world, they're angry at everyone around them. They have allowed that demon to feed on them for so long that they're just totally angry people, selfish people. There are people who, who've allowed the demon of I'm the center of the world. Everyone should do the right thing, which is what I tell them to do. And if they don't, I'm going to be in opposition to them. We're going to have friction. We're not going to get along because they don't do what I tell them to do because it's only me and my opinion that is important and other people should realize that. And there are people who are totally selfish. What does it look like? They're very sensitive about themselves, not about your feelings, about their feelings. How did they get there? They opened the door, they let the demon come in, and they fed him three times a day, big meals. And now the demon has taken over their lives. The, de the demon could be a demon of addiction. Look, there are things, stresses, problems, people that I have to deal with. It's a lot of work dealing with these things. You know what? It's easier to take a substance, to take drugs, to take alcohol, um, whatever I become addicted to, gambling, buying, whatever. It's easier to escape what I have to face and not work at it and just go into another world where I'm taking care of myself and shutting out everyone else and all the challenges of life. And it starts very small, and then I feed it, and I feed it, and the demon is there, and I can't get him out anymore. It's grown too big. Our Lord saw someone in the synagogue at Capernaum who was possessed by a demon. It had come to the point where the person didn't know how to get rid of the demon. God pitied that person. So God drove the demon out of the person. It was over. Whatever it was, was gone. Now we look at that and we say, that's wonderful. God, you're good. God, you're going to do this for me now? Uh, whatever it is, what demon have I let into my life? What, what, what's there in my soul that I feed every once in a while? God, you're going to get rid of it for me like that? And God's answer is, I feel compassion for you. I did and I do. I know you're suffering. But listen, it doesn't work that way. I didn't come into the world to do that. Because when I say that to God, God, I've got a bad habit that I've allowed to grow in me for 50 years. Now, God, will you get it out of there? This is like the kid who's supposed to take the algebra regions. Did I go to class? Sometimes. Did I even listen in class? Well, when I wasn't writing notes to my friends, I did. Uh, did I get the Barron's books and study for the regions? No, no way. So comes the day of the regions. 
and walking to school, oh dear God, please help me to pass the regents. I really, no, it doesn't work that way. You didn't do anything yourself to make it happen, and you're throwing it all on God and saying, God, you do it. So we would like to do that with the demons that we have fed in our souls. Now, God, take it away from me. It doesn't work that way. And if it did, and he took it away, give me a couple of days. I'll find another one to take its place because it is that easy, and I don't have to do anything to make it happen. What God does is he tells us, listen, I have compassion on your need, I understand. I will give you every help that you need to do what you have to do. I will give you guidance in my words. In prayer, I will give you comfort. In the sacraments, in Holy Communion, in confession, I will give you every strength that your soul needs to expel this demon. I'm on your side. I'm there to help you. To the degree that you are attached to me, you'll be able to do this. I'm a loving father. What did, what did our Lord tell the apostles? How do we address God? Call him father. A father loves his children. A father is going to do everything he can for his children. God in heaven is going to do everything he can to help us overcome whatever it is we have to overcome. One of the, the first step in the 12 step program for addiction is to admit, I do not have power to do this. I need the help of God. I must attach myself to God so that he can help me to accomplish this. And so God will and does, and that becomes part of our faith as we journey from this point to the gates of heaven to keep us on that road. God will give us every grace, every strength, the wisdom that comes from his word in scripture, the comfort and strength that comes from prayer. He's going to help us. He's not going to abandon us. But we want him to do it all. And it doesn't work that way. Look, he tried to do it. Feeling compassion for the miserable people they put right in front of him, he cured them because he felt sorry for them. But I'm pretty sure that with each miracle, he said, this is going to bite me because they're watching this and they think that this is what I came to do. This is what they want me to do for them. They want me to do all the work to make this world perfect for them. That's not why I came. And besides, it's not good for them if I do that. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Please stand for the creed. I believe in one God.
Blessed be the kingdom of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, now, forever, for ages, unto endless ages. Amen. The response to each petition will be, Lord, have mercy. For parents struggling to live decent lives and teach their children to reverence and worship God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the protection of those who travel, for the sick, the suffering, for those in captivity, and for their salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the despondent, that they may experience the saving hand of God with deliverance from all troubles, misery, danger, and want, in even the most distressing of circumstances, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick of the parish, especially Anna Maria Gutierrez, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deceased family and friends and the souls of those enrolled in our parish purgatorial society for this month, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O oh God, help, save, pity, protect us, who call upon you in faith. For we do rely on the intercession of Blessed Virgin Mary, imploring St. Gennaro, St. Blaise, all the saints. We commend ourselves, each other, our whole lives, to Christ our God. To thee be glory for ages unto endless Ages. Amen. There are three announcements for today. This weekend, throats will be dust after weekend masses and after the 8 a.m. mass on Wednesday, February 3rd. Candles will be blessed after the 8 a.m. mass on Tuesday, February 2nd. This Friday, February 5th, is First Friday. There will be no 8 a.m. morning mass. The parish mass will be celebrated in the evening at 7 p.m., followed by exposition of the Blessed Sacrament. Thank you. transform them into the sacraments of our redemption for we ask this through Christ our Lord Amen. who Lord be with you Amen. lift up your hearts Amen. let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly right and just our duty our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty eternal God through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, freed us from unending death. 
by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. So with angels, archangels, thrones, dominions, the hosts, the powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, and without end we acclaim. saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, take this, all of you, drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. We offer you, Lord, bread of life, chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence 
and minister to you. Humbly we pray, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, all the clergy. Remember, brothers and sisters, fallen asleep in hope of resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, Blessed Apostles, the saints who pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, God Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory, all honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, our Father, who art in heaven, our be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I O body of Christ, keep me safe for eternal life. Amen. <laughs>
feast of St. Blaise. So I'll give the blessing for the throats after Mass. But of course, like everything else, it has COVID restrictions. We have to maintain the six foot distancing. And also they told us that you can't touch the candles to the person's neck. All right, so here's what we'll do. From this side, you go out this way. From this side, you go out that way. Don't bunch up in the aisles, all right? Keep your distance. Wait until there's room in the aisle for you to stand safely. Then you come up to receive the blessing this way. Come up to the post, the end of the communion rail, and one stand there and one stand there, so you got your six feet. Then what you do is come close to the rail because my arms are long, but they're not that long. <laughs> come close to the rail, and what I'll do is I'll, I'll touch the candle to the shoulder of each person, okay, on either side. That's the best we could do, all right? So come out that way, come around, stand at the post, I'll touch the candle to each person's shoulder then, and I'll give you the uh, blessing of St. Blaise for the throats. Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O oh Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Praise be to God. Amen.